Hello everyone, it's Georgia down in Australia and once again attempting to kill two birds with one stone or with one ink pad. I started my latest scripture writing assignment for my parish's Write the Word project and after I'd created this background I thought oh well this would actually make a really good process video. So what I'm going to do is redo a bit of a smooched ink background to show you how I got this look and then I will swap over back to the original and go through the steps of everything else that I want to do. Now killing two birds with one stone or one ink pad I'm also going to use a little bit of this as part of a fun thing that I've thought up for my Facebook group, God's Refrigerator, where I sort of run people through what I'm going to call a secret art project. And we'll see if we get people excited and joining in on that. So first thing we're going to do is create a smooched ink background. Now I'm using Distress Inks and I'm using two shades of blue, Faded Jeans and Mermaid Lagoon, not that it matters which ones, but I want a, a lighter and a darker shade. And then I want a color that is contrasting or complementary to those. So I'm using fossilized amber, which is a golden yellow kind of color. And I'm going to use two different methods. First of all, I'm going to start with the blue and I'm going to do the most common way of doing this, which is just spreading some of the ink on my silicon mat. You could use a piece of acetate or plastic or even glad wrap if you don't have a mat like this. And I'm spraying it with some water till I see all those little bubbles. And then, oh, I should have said, I do suggest you get a piece of watercolor paper is the best for this, but whatever you want to use as long as it's happy to be inked. And make it about six by eight inches. Now, putting my page upside down, I am just sort of dabbing it here and there, dragging it a little bit. And this is the result I'm getting. It's kind of a blind arting because I don't actually see where it's going, but that's what I kind of like about it. If I want more, I can go back and go, okay, see, I want a little bit more on this corner here. So I'll sort of go back and just drag that little corner through it. So I've got that. Dragging it gives you those lines. If you just tap it very lightly without moving it, you'll get the dots from the water splashing on the ink like I have here. When you actually drag it heavily, you get those big areas like this. So you get different kind of effects depending on what you do. Wiping that off, I'm giving that a few seconds to dry because I don't want my colors to be blending. And once that's dry, I'm going to pretty much repeat the process, but with my darker color or my darker shade of blue. Again, give it a bit of a spray. And I'm focusing on the white parts of the page now. So I'm kind of, I know it's a blind process, but I'm kind of controlling where I am hitting that ink with my paper. So it's half blind, but half planned, if that kind of makes sense. And going again for different sorts of movements and textures by sometimes dragging, sometimes just dabbing. And I don't want too much. I don't want to cover the entire surface. I do want some white to still show. So I'm going to stop here before I get too carried away, as I usually do. Clean that up, let that dry. Now that both of those blues are dry, I'm going to come in with my contrasting color. But this time I want to have just a little bit more control over where the color is going. So I'm going to use a smaller silicon mat. Again, if you don't have one of these, you can use a piece of plastic. The plastic liners at the bottom of the recyclable, <laughs> recyclable shopping bags. Some people like to use plastic cling wrap to do this sort of thing. I've never tried it. I'm sure it's lots of fun. And I'm putting a little bit of this ink onto my mat, spraying it. And now, now this is always a bit of fun because it's not as controlled as I pretend that it is, but I'm going to turn the mat over and I'm going to use it very quickly to dab the parts that I want. Now, even though my ink is dry, Distress Ink is water reactive, and so the blue is kind of waking up and mixing with the fossilized am amber and turning green, but that's okay, that's fine. 
And so I'm sort of putting that kind of very subtle cross design over it. I did it more sort of abstracty on this one. I didn't want it to be like this obvious cross because I think if I put crosses on every single piece of faith art that I do, it becomes a little bit, I don't know, cliche or something. So I like to have it kind of, I don't know, incognito or something. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, now that's that's my kind of controlled design that I was going for. And now putting a little bit more ink onto my big silicon mat and I'm going to repeat what we did with the blue but only in very very small places so i'm sort of going for the corners mainly all right and i'm going to stop and leave it as it is so that is my little inked background so once you've got this background done let it dry so i'm reverting back to my original and from here I will write out my verse and embellish my page. With my background completed, I can now start putting my page together. I'm going to begin by doing a bit of stamping around the edges. I think I've already mentioned that what I'm working on here is the latest, my latest assignment for my parish Write the Word project where we as a parish are handwriting the entire New Testament of the Bible and then hoping to do some, if not all, of the Old Testament. We'll see how that's going. Now, my latest assignment is from St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians, and it is chapter 3, verses 14 through to 21. And though I am writing out the entire verse, I am going to focus especially on may you comprehend the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ, which surpasses knowledge. So I'm going to really focus on that part and I'm going to focus on measurement imagery. So I'm going to have a little bit too much fun with this one, I think. Now, full disclosure, I have been inspired here by something I saw on Pinterest. I did my usual thing of seeing something I really liked, going, oh, that's really cool, kind of taking a snapshot inside my brain, forgetting to pin or even take a screenshot or anything of this picture. So it's gone now. I can't find it again. I don't even know where I found it. But that's probably for the best because it's this kind of how I like to approach things that I, well, we call it scrap lifting, don't we? Or basically just plagiarizing stuff that we see on Pinterest. I really don't like to have the thing next to me and to be copying exactly what I like or what I have found because then all I'm doing really is just making a replica of something else. So very often I'll see something I like and I'll go, oh, that's really cool. And I'll look at it and then I'll get rid of it. And the things that I really liked about it are kind of just ideas inside my head and I'll put those onto my page and sort of some very often further down the track I'll actually find the original and most of the time mine is nothing like it which is great which is kind of what I'm going for because if I'm again if I'm just copying what I've seen then all I'm doing is making a copy rather than making my own art so I really want to focus on measurement imagery and I'm going to start by doing just some rough kind of picturey stamping. I am using my stamp platform today because I want this to stamp well and you know sometimes I do these things and I say it's only background it doesn't matter but today it does matter. So I'm going to start with a Kayser craft stamp and this is from a really really old sort of astronomy kind of based set and I'm going to use this kind of, I don't even know what you call this, but astronomy measuring stuff. <laughs> you know how technical I am. And I'm going to, oh, now this is interesting. I don't actually want that up here because I want to overlap it. So I'm getting myself just a blank piece of paper to put underneath. I'm gonna hold this down. I don't want to use the entire design. I want it to sort of come in from off the page. So I will just pick it up here 
and stamp that down. So I have this up in the corner and I want to use something that's kind of numeric and that's where my Chow Bella stamps here are coming in handy. And this is from something called Numbers, which is perfect. And I'm just going to put this up here. It's like a measuring tape with different numbers and inches and words. I'm just going to pick that up and give that a stamp. I've got those numbers up here. Oops. And then I might just do one more here in the bottom corner. Again, leaving that space around it so I can overlap my design. And here I'm using something that's not so measurement based. It's another Chow Bella stamp. This one is botanical and postmarks. Just because I want something to break it up and have it not so technical. I'm going to put this here, I think, at a bit of an angle. Pick that up and give that a stamp. Now I've inked up this stamp a little lighter than I normally would because I was wanting more of a diffuse and light background kind of picture down here. I did not want something really obvious. So there is one more bit of stamping I want to do on this background, and that is I want to have numbers running across the bottom, which <laughs> at this point I'm going, well, that kind of defeats the purpose of having that three there because I think I'm going to cover it up. But that's okay, not a problem. So I've got my Tim Holtz block print alphabet and number stamps. I'm going to stamp these numbers across the page. Now just making sure first that they're stamping the way I want them. Good, okay, nice and dark. So I'm going to start with number one here. And I'm going to make my way across the page. Two, so I'm going to go all the way across the page up to nine, maybe ten, depending on how far the numbers can go. Okay, so I have numbers one through to nine kind of looking at this and going, well, that was kind of wasted, but that doesn't matter. It's okay. By the time I have every, all the elements added to this page, it will end up being a background thing. So it's all good. Okay, so that's the stamping on my page, measurements, numbers, that kind of look. So the next thing I'll get to do is actually write the scripture. I'm now going to write my verse onto the main area of this page. I'm keeping this margin free because I'm going to be decorating it by sticking some measuring tape onto it. So I'm keeping that in mind, keeping this area free. I'm going to write my scripture verse over this part of the page. I'm going to start quite near the top and write rather small because once I get to the sentence that says, what is the breadth and length and height and depth? I'm going to use stamps, alphabet stamps, to stamp those words quite large. So I want to make sure that I leave myself a lot of space for that. So I'm starting right up the top and writing it kind of small. Okay, so I've ended this. May have power to comprehend with all the saints. Now I want to write what is the kind of larger and then have breadth in stamps and I'm going to do the stamping first because I don't want to run out of space and I'm going to start backwards if that makes sense so I'm going to work my way across the page I want it to end sort of here trusting on my backward spelling here So I'm glad I did that because if I had written my what is the first, I think I might have run out of space when it came to stamping that word. Now I'm already thinking, uh oh, this could be a problem because like I said, I'm going to have this thing going on here. So I don't have that much space. So what I think I'm going to do is, once I find my pen, here we go. I will write what is the
this way. And I will come back and thicken that up a little bit. So I'm going to write the rest of that sentence using different alphabet stamps so that I have different fonts and different looks through each of the four big words. So that's my stamped words. I just need to put the and in between all of them. And then I think I will write and to know the love of Christ to those two words will be stamps and then the rest I will continue with just normal writing. I had to stick my page down so it would not move while I was writing. So that is my page. I know it's not all on screen, so I'll do a bit of a roll through. So I've kept most of it as just plain writing, but this section here, I've got all the big words in stamps just to, oh, oh, here we go. I knew I had to come back for this. There we go. So that's the writing component. So a quick bit of decorating and I'll be done. Thank you to my friend who supplied the measuring tape. I needed a measuring tape to use on this. I've been given this one, which is fabulous because it's just the right color for my page. It matches the fossilized amber ink. So wonderful. And I have cut two pieces of it. I've kept one piece with the metal bit. Did not do that to the other end because there was too much of a gap between the metal and the numbers. And I thought that looked a bit funny. So I've just cut a random bit and I'm going to put them and as, as I'm playing around with them, I'm sort of going, oh, well, that kind of defeats the purpose of all these numbers up here. And part of me is like, oh, I don't want to cover them. And the other part's going, yeah, but background, background, Georgia, you always say that. So I've actually cut one of them a little bit shorter than the page with my thought being I might just have it overlapping like this but still leaving some of those numbers visible just to I don't know keep myself happy or something so I'm going to stick them like that but first of all I'm going to grab my Tim Holtz tiny attacher any stapler will do and I'm going to staple them up here now you don't need to do this I'm just doing this for fun and for effect more than anything it's not a necessary thing and just I just think it kind of goes with that look of having the stamped numbers and almost not technical but there's a word for it as usual and now I'm going to glue the tape down it down like this and give it a chance to dry making sure of course that I don't cover any of my words there wonderful I'll just put something heavy on top of it now and let it dry and one final thing before I call it done I have cut out a couple of hearts now my friend Tina if you are ever watching this <laughs> I know when you gave me those couple of Tim Holtz frosted sheets this is probably not what you had in mind but you know they're so special and I know they discontinued now and really hard to find so I've been hoarding them and saving them up for a really really special project so today was a special project I've used a little piece of one of them <laughs> the rest I'm still hoarding away going oh no no I can't use this it's too special <laughs> but I've cut out a couple of hearts with from those frosted sheets because they are translucent but they've got that kind of white frosty look and my plan is to put them maybe one kind of half underneath the measuring tape and one like this and I want them stapled to the page now they're going to look something like this and this is as far as I'm going with this video because I want my friend who gave me the tape to do the honors and staple them in place wherever they want them so that it's kind of a I know I did most of it but shh. <laughs> it's kind of a combined effort on this particular write the word page so I'm going to end the video with them here 
and later on this week today tomorrow sometime when I manage to catch up with my friend and get them to do the choosing of the space and the stapling I will take a photo and at the end of this video will be a picture of the finished page and where the hearts ended up with the staple through them to hold them along the border of the page see because it is translucent I can actually put it over the words and we can still see the words through it which is kind of what I really like about it so this has been my latest write the word assignment very very Pinterest inspired I stole the idea of stamping the words and the numbers along the bottom as well as the measuring tape and the hearts from a page I saw on Pinterest that was just focusing on this part of the verse and I have expanded it, done some more stamping. I've done an inked background with the kind of incognito cross inked into the design. And yeah, I'm kind of happy with it. So if you want to join me in creating a page like this, be it on a separate piece of paper or a canvas or even straight into your Bibles, and it doesn't have to be for this particular verse, you could actually use this method for any scripture that you like looking at you Kath <laughs> I think we had the talk about you doing this for Ezekiel so I really really love to see you do that so anybody who joins in please let me know in the comments below if you are going to do something like this and of course please come over to my Facebook group God's Refrigerator where you can share your pictures and join a great community of faith artists who support each other and inspire each other if this inspires you to create a page and then share it on social media, tag me, George's Bible, on Instagram or Facebook so that I can get a heads up and have a look and go, yay, this is fantastic. <laughs> okay, so thank you very much for joining me and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.